And if we click, we'll see that T comes up a lot because it's being called every frame. Okay. So to get our click to remove stuff to work, we're going to have to do a couple of things. In here, we want to get our current event. So we'll take the current event and then we want to see what type of event this is. So if e dot is is mouse and e dot button is zero, which is the left mouse. And e dot Type, which is the event type, and we want a mouse down event type. Okay, so if we do all of that, then we know that we clicked in our scene, and then we want to see if we clicked on a cube, one of our white squares. So, camera dot current so we're going to cast away from our camera to where our mouse is clicking and seeing if we hit any of the colliders um, dot screen point array this takes a new vector three so the e has a mouse position which has an x and it's the negative on the y plus our camera dot current dot pixel height okay and that will create a ray that will shoot from this position down and hit one of our cubes hopefully and to determine if it hit it we want to do a raycast hit if physics dot raycast ray out hit or r Okay, so now that we know we've clicked on a cube, and in here we want to destroy from our list of slots whatever we hit. So with our hit object, we have a collider that we hit, and from that collider we have a game object. And so slots dot remove. We want to remove this game object. And then we want to destroy immediate hit dot collider dot game object. And then after this is done, we want to say e dot use so that we notify the uh, Unity that we use this event. Okay. So register. And then we can click cubes and it will disappear. Cool. Alright. So the point of the grid is so that we can paint maps and then save them. So in order to save this, we gotta do a couple of things. The first thing is we want to have another game object called our grid root and our grid root is going to sit underneath the grid so instead of the slots being ch children of the grid they're going to be children of the grid root so let's clear this 
and then create an empty game object. Center this to zero. Call this the root. And the reason why we want to do this is that we don't want to save our prefab with the grid script on it. And this this grid script is merely going to be here just to create the maps for us that we use later on. So let's go ahead and take the root and assign it. So now back in our create grid, instead of pairing it to the game object, we want to parent it to the grid root. We'll save that. And then you can click create grid and it will create them under the root. And we can still, oh yeah, we have to register. Whenever you save uh, the model develop, you're going to have to re-register your uh, scene. So we can still remove. So we can clear that. And now we're going to go ahead and save this. So let's go ahead and make another public bool. Call it save. We want to make another function. Call it save. And then if save. This needs to be a capital S. And then save equals false. Okay, so how do you save the object? So to do this, we're going to go ahead and use a thing called prefab utility. And this has a create prefab, which takes a string path, which is the uh, asset path we want it to save to, and the game object we want to save. So our asset path is assets slash resources slash prefabs plus some name and we also want to use the grid root here. So we need a public string. Layout okay so let's go ahead and do this and if we had a layout name of box we want to use the layout name here plus layout name and we need the extension dot prefab Okay, so if we click save, we can see that we have a box. And if we drag this into the scene, it is a box full of slots. So using this system, we can go ahead and create a grid I'm going to make a skeleton so let's res register this and then There we go. Click save. And now we have a skeleton that we can drag in. And that's gonna that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching guys.